It's a creative industry talk. My name is Eddie Okela. Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question, I think, to answer. The country is in a lot of... It's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, or what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful for me. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and he would show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes <laughs> would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. So I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, a lot of indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, the love for debates and, 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 and really in a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think it's also the fact that um, I won't lie. I didn't know what I wanted to be. <laughs> It's a CEO bench, so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are overlearned and stuff like that. So I will, I will change the script this time around. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler. If I'm looking to know who you are, are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question, I think, to answer. I am a typical Lao man from a route north yeah. in a place called Ogur, and where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agweng. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior. And when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene. Yeah. Where is Junior? <laughs> and they will, they will identify me. But I am I'm typically Ugandan, only yeah. Ugandan, yeah. Uh, from Lira. I pride myself from being uh, from Lira. I, earlier on, I, I was joking and saying I'm the coolest lago yeah. south of Karuma. <laughs> when you cross Karuma, there are so many. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, when yeah. you're down the south so, after Karuma, oh, I think I, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, now that you know, Tony Otoa is Ugandan. And of course, what are the values that define you as a Ugandan? Um, I think it's the love for country, uh, love for nation. You know, truth be told, the country is in a lot of, it's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, or what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful for me. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and he would show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes <laughs> would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. So I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, a lot of indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, the love for debates and, 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 and really in 
a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think it's also the fact that um, I won't lie. I did not know what I wanted to be. It's a CEO bench, so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are over learned and stuff like that. So I will, <laughs> I will change the script this time around. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler. If I'm looking to know who you are, are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question, I think, to answer. I am a Tipilo Lao man from a rooted north yeah. in a place called Ogur. And where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agwen. Yeah. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior. And when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene. Yeah. Where is Junior? <laughs> and they will, they will identify me. But I am I'm typically Ugandan, yeah. only Ugandan, yeah. uh, from Lira. I uh, pride myself from being uh, from Lira. I, earlier on, I, I was joking and saying I'm the coolest Lago yeah, yeah. south of Karuma. <laughs> when you cross Karuma, there are so many. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah. you're down the south so, after Karuma, oh, I think I, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, now that you know Tony Otoa is Ugandan, and of course, what are the values that define you as a Ugandan? Um, I think it's the love for country, uh, love for nation. You know, truth be told, the country is in a lot of, it's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful for me. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and you show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. So I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, a lot of indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, uh, the love for debates and, 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 and really in a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think it's also the fact that um, I won't lie. I did not know what I wanted to be. <laughs> It's a CEO bench, so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are over learned and stuff like that. So I will, <laughs> I will change the script this time around. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler. If I'm looking to know who you are, are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question, I think, to answer. I am a Tipilo Lao man from a rooted north yeah. in a place called Ogur. 
and where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agueng. Yeah. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior. And when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene. Yeah. Where is Junior? And they will, they will identify me. But I am I'm typically Ugandan, only yeah. Ugandan, yeah. Uh, from Lira. I pride myself from being uh, from Lira. I, earlier on, I, I was joking and saying I'm the coolest Lago yeah, yeah. south of Karuma. <laughs> when you cross Karuma, there are so many. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, when yeah. you're down the south so after Karuma, oh, I think I, I'm number <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. Well, now that you know, Tony Otoa is Ugandan. And of course, what are the values that define you as a Ugandan? Um, I think it's the love for country, uh, love for nation. You know, truth be told, the country is in a lot of, it's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and you would show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes <laughs> would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. Uh, so I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, a lot of indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, the love for debates and, 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 and really a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think it's also the fact that, um, I won't lie, I didn't know what I wanted to be. It's a CEO bench, so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are over learned and stuff like that. So I will, <laughs> I will change the script this time around. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler. If I'm looking to know who you are, are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question, I think, to answer. I am a typical Lao man from a route north yeah. in a place called Ogur, and where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agueng. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior. And when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene. Yeah. Where is Junior? <laughs> and they will, they will identify me. But I am, I'm typically Ugandan, only yeah. Ugandan, yeah. Uh, from Lira. I uh, pride myself from being uh, from Lira. I, earlier on, I, I was joking and saying I'm the coolest Lago yeah, yeah. south of Karuma. <laughs> when you cross Karuma, there are so many. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, when yeah. you're down the south so, after Karuma, oh, I think I, I'm number <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. Well, now that you know Tony Otoa is Ugandan, and of course, what are the values that define you as a Ugandan? Um, I think it's the love for country, uh, love for nation. You know, truth be told, the country is in a lot of, it's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change 
what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful for me. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and he would show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes <laughs> would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. So I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, a lot of indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, the love for debates and, 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 and really in a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think it's also the fact that um, I won't lie. I did not know what I wanted to be. Creative Industry Talk. My name is Ed Yokila, and of course, for the first time, we have brought you. In fact, we've taken the Creative Industry Talk to France, and uh, initially we were having Stella Tal all the way in France, but we brought France to Uganda. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in the studio is Faizo Chiwewa, who is. The founder and artistic director of Baimba Foundation. Faisal, welcome to the program. Thank you. And of course, uh, Lucille uh, Fontaine, who is uh, from France in Kampala here in the studio. Lucille, welcome to the show. From Paris. Thank you. Nice from to meet Paris. you. And, uh, <laughs> ça va, ça va bien? Ça va et toi? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, and welcome to the show. So today we're going to, if you hear, throw some French you know that the creativity on the show has just increased to another level, <laughs> right? And of course, we're going to bring you Stella Tal all the way in Paris. Stella, how are you doing today? And uh, of course, Stella could be having some, uh, you know, audio problems and stuff like that, but uh, we will definitely be able to bring Stella back. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive into the show just right after this break. Enjoy the moment, get your coffee cup ready, and of course, for the next one hour or so, we're going to be talking creativity, and of course, you are going to be able to participate in this discussion. We're talking about international cultural exchange and of course, collaborations. Well, how do we do it? How do we sell our cultures out? And Lucille is going to be able to take us through. Stay right there. Be right back after the break.
Welcome back to the Creative Industry Talk. My name is Edio Kela and in the studio is Lusso Fontaine from the French Embassy in Kampala and of course Faizo Chiwewa from Baimba and Stella Tal in Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program. Okay. And um, creativity, Lucille, starts from thinking. Everyone in this world is born with a measure of creativity in them. Uh, we go to school to just enhance it, to make it better. And uh, before a child is taken to school, they're very creative. They're drawing things everywhere. They're putting things everywhere. They speak language we don't understand <laughs> until they learn how a bad language, and then we start confusing them. But we take them to school and they become very creative. That means that everyone born in this world is a creative mind. It also means that we have a culture behind the things we do. We want to start from you, uh, particularly, to give us the context. Growing up as a child, were you creative? If yes, how creative were you? Hmm. No, I think I was more intellectual than creative, actually. <laughs> I was more into analysis than into creativity. Okay. Yeah, I think there are different minds, actually. I think there are many ways of being creative. Mm -hmm. It's not just about drawing things. It's also about like the way of thinking you have. So, yeah, I think it's a large definition we can make of creativity. Okay. Faiso, growing up, were you a creative person? Lucilla said you have to think about it and write, which means the kids, when we were young, were thinking and putting whatever we were thinking together. Were you creative when you were young? I don't think so. I mean, uh, I wasn't really... I don't know. I mean, I never thought that I was creative. I was just growing up and messing <laughs> up everything. <laughs> I think my parents were really mad at me all the time because uh, I felt like destroying stuff was the best way possible maybe i was taking attention so that was my level of creativity <laughs> <laughs> but on a serious note yeah. i think i've been you know since um i've been in art for the for a long time and since i had my first production stage production when i was six years old okay. so i grew up in theater uh, my parents were philanthropists so they were supporting we had these community theater groups so i was acting and dancing and performing in that so from a very young age, um, I was in the arts and I was very uh, happy about it till I grew up and I got tired. And I'm like, I think I've had enough. Then I wanted to do totally different things. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Uh, Stella Tal in Paris, were you creative when you were young? We already know you're a fashion designer and, um, and you're already teaching art in school. Were you creative when you were young? Let's dive in from there. Stella in Paris. Um, yes, hello everyone. Um, yes, I was coming from a creative family. There was no doubt that I was going to be part of them. And uh, I grew up in a family of six, and my big brothers were artists. So I grew up in their studios. I could see them do the work. And it fascinated me. I really wanted to be like them. And they really gave me the time. They taught me how to paint, how to do portraits. And then my teacher, actually she just retired, she was a headmistress for the last 40 years. And I used to go with her to school before I started school. And I could see what the children were doing. So all that encouraged me. And um, I, I thought, me too, I can do what the rest can do, no matter how old I was that time. But I started painting when I was five, real painting and doing many activities that I could see other children bigger in school were doing. Thank you very much. And um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. We have a long a short time to get there, but a long time to go. And I want to start from uh, Lucille. You are a cultural attaché in the French Embassy here in Kampala. And um, would you take us through what your role is as a cultural attaché? We always hear this. We know military attaché. We know what <laughs> we, do, we don't know what cultural and educational and linguistic, you know, entail. Would you take us through in a snapshot? Yeah, I think it's normal if you don't really uh, know what we do because we're not supposed to be uh, on the stage, right? We're supposed to be uh, behind. Yes. So, um, yeah, our, our role is to uh, make connections between uh, the country where we are and uh, France. So the purpose is to just uh, create links, to make artists work together, to allow uh, collaborations, 
Um, then we have uh, many partners. They could be French, they could be Ugandan uh, in this case. So for example, we work a lot with uh, Alliance Française, which is actually in the streets. Yes. Um, we work a lot with the uh, École Française, and then we work with the uh, universities, uh, public universities in Uganda, and with artists. For example, we work with uh, Nige Nige, um, we work with um, the National Museum, National Theatre, and so our role is just to um, allow collaborations and uh, try to um, create uh, projects between France and uh, these partners. Okay. For a long time, the uh, the French have been very strong in uh, supporting uh, cultural collaborations around the continent, more especially in the Francophonie countries, uh, not so much in the Anglophone countries, but uh, that's understandable. I think they just wanted to give the Brits the space to do their work. Um, so that means that, uh, you know, be, them being here, especially in Uganda, in an Anglophone country for so long, one of the significant part of the French contribution to Ugandan art was the beginning of uh, the Alliance, uh, Alliance Francaise, which has been there. And when it used to be housed at the National Theatre, so many artists really benefited from it. They really cultivated the culture of collaborations, they cultivated the culture of performance. They were very supportive of artists traveling and exchanging. And of course, sometimes it, depending on, we're talking with Brussels here, uh, depending on who is there as a director, sometimes you know it might be law, it might be visual arts, it might be fashion, it might be film or music. So everyone who comes in as a director, they have their niche, and uh, they have been doing that very well. I'm not so familiar about their uh, their French language uh, because I don't speak it, but I, I think uh, I also understand that there are many people in Uganda who are learning French and they're very excited about it, and you know. So it's a good thing, and uh, even us as Bayimba, we've collaborated with the French uh, so many times. We are also collaborating now from a different perspective with the FD and stuff like that. So there is a there is a lot of possibilities that have been um, you know ex explored in collaboration with Bayimba and the French Embassy and the Alliance. Yeah. Okay, we would like to dive into France. Paris, uh, Stella Attal, what is your understanding of uh, Lucille's role at the embassy and how are you collaborating with them? Okay. Um, uh, for me, I think uh, uh, Lucille's role is um, to bring a connection or to promote the two cultures uh, in terms of um, education, uh, uh, culturally, and uh, culture means as well as uh, economic development between Uganda and France. And I think her role in Uganda is to do more of exchange programs between the creatives in France and in the creatives in uh, Uganda. Like she has said, she's working with a lot of different people in different, in different sectors. And uh, for me, it's been years I've been actually working with the French embassy. Um, since, I think, since 2008, 2007. Even before that, we had um, Alliance Francaise, we had the Laba festivals. There is a lot that we've been doing with Alliance Francaise. And then with the embassies, they always have programs that they are doing with the communities. And the best way to promote a cultural exchange with the local communities. Because yes, we find there is a lot that can be done with the information we get in school. But then remember, this information, you can get it online, on the internet, in book. But then what is more important is to do these cultural exchanges. Even if it's education, they want French students to come to Uganda and interact physically with the local communities, schools in the local communities. And when we have same people come to France, yes, they've read about France, education, culture, but then it's different when someone is on ground and they can see exactly the culture that is on ground. Thank you much, Stella, for that one uh, you know, recap of what your understanding and collaboration with uh, the French Embassy is as far as cultural and creativity is concerned. Now, we want to dive to our first question before we go for a break. 
And I want to go back to Lucille. Um, now that we understand your work very well, and uh, <laughs> we can now start to <laughs> yes, and have some very great discussion around it. Lucille, why is international cultural exchange and collaboration critical in the contemporary world today? Um, because I think we've done with uh, just like individuals uh, working alone in their own room, you know. I think this image of the artist is now done. And uh, we know now that it's really um, fruitful to work together and to have these kind of collaborations between countries, between cultures. So I think that now it's really important to allow artists to just work together, to have some projects in common and to uh, be able to take some parts of um, different ways of thinking the world, of uh, thinking the, the links between the cultures. Okay. And Faizo, why do you think this cultural exchange is a very important from your perspective as a, a person who program you know, festivals as well as the artistic director from where you sit? Yeah, um, I think uh, without collaborations and exchanges, um, we would have not really managed to get where we are. And it comes at all different levels, financially, uh, artistically. Um, uh, we have, when we started our festival in 2008, the biggest challenge we had was uh, content for our festival. So it was really difficult because we had so few bands, we had some few artists in terms of uh, visuals, in terms of fashion, in terms of film. But what we really invested in from the beginning was to bring in artists from outside for two reasons. One, we wanted them to show the Ugandan artists how where they are in terms of development, artistic development. And two, we wanted them also to collaborate with the Ugandan artists. And that really helped some of the Ugandan artists to learn. They say like, okay, I'm a musician, I've been here. And then you find an artist like Didi Awadi or, uh, or you find someone like uh, Aquanara from Nigeria uh, or someone like uh, 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 Belista from uh, South Africa or Belita, sorry. When she comes here and she spends a week in studio with Jemima or with uh, uh, you know, Kaz Kasozi, the, the artists they are working with are learning something from them and as well as they are learning something and then after that they have, they have created uh, an album or an EP. So we've really worked like this for a long time. Uh, some of the most things that I've really been very proud of um, in terms of collaborations are the, some of the new art forms that we've managed to introduce into the market, like street theatre. And uh, when we started uh, doing street theatre in 2010, uh, most of the people we worked with, they were like, yeah, I'm a street theatre artist. And then I put them in a residence for six months and they realized actually they were not doing street theatre. <laughs> so they learned a lot and we had a good year of uh, street theatre production that was touring. We've done, you know, headphone disco collaborations. Uh, I think we were the first ones to bring headphone disco here in 2009 from Glasgow. Uh, we brought in uh, uh, video mapping with a French Matthew uh, from, uh, from Paris and it was really the most amazing. So we did uh, an interaction, audience interaction with the walls of the National Theatre uh, during the festival. It was one of the most amazing, uh, amazing uh, exchange and collaboration. So we've really, uh, through collaboration and exchanges, we've managed to champion so many new art forms here in Uganda and also introduced new acts of work to artists here. Yeah. Wow. We're going to dive to Stella Tal before we come back to Lucille. Lucille, I know what Faisal just said makes you feel good. Uh, does it make you feel like you are, yeah, yeah, I'm working. My, my, my collaboration with these guys are working from what Faisal just said. No, I don't think I feel pride. I, I think uh, it's more about happiness of knowing that so many projects are, are going well. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Uh, uh, Stella Town in France, uh, why do you think that uh, international cultural exchange and collaboration is quite key in this contemporary world we're in right now? The fact that you are now based in France and teaching art in France. Mm. No, I don't think I've um, it helps you know the world beyond your own world. And um, I've seen so many, not seen, there are many, like I could talk about the French embassy, the projects they're doing in Uganda with a campus France, which is educational programs where they bring people, like creatives from Uganda to France. And last year, end of last year, is the group of um, journalists. It's very important that journalists should have such a cultural 
diversity of information, not only in the countries where they live, but then if you want to talk about France, it's good that you go to that place, understand their values, their norms, their cultures, so that when you come to write about it, you know exactly what you're writing. And then I've had uh, a collaboration. It's an education exchange for fashion designers, where we bring fashion designers from one of the schools in France to Uganda to interact with a local school, like for a period of two weeks. And then during that week, the French students are to their teaching the way the education system is uh, fashionized in France, and then also they are learning from the Ugandan ones how things are done in Uganda. So at the end of the day, the Ugandan ones have learned a little, much as they have not been able to come to France, but then the fact that to be able to bring these children who have interacted with them, for them they've learned something from them. And also the French students have learned something from the Ugandan students. And when they go back home, they are going to bring out the news. They are going to spread that news about fashion in Uganda, what they saw in Uganda. And for me, I think that's the best way we can like, uh, promote our cultures. Because for me, every time you travel, before you even people pick you at the airport, they're going to ask you, what did you see? What did you eat? What do people speak? What is this? So it is that story of interaction that is really needed and what we are really trying to do. Thank you very much, Stella, for that uh, interaction right there. And we're going to take a break. Stella Tal in Paris, um, Faiso Chiwewa here in Kampala, and Lucille Kia in Kampala. We'll be right back after this. We want to hear from you. Please send us your kisses and this is up there post them as questions she's here to answer them Faiso is here to answer them and Stella Tal is here to dig deeper into it as well we're going to take a break and when we come back the creative industry talk will continue with our next question on how important but not only how important how can we contribute to making these collaborations even much better Stella Tal will be right back after the break It's a CEO bench, so usually people want to assume that all CEOs are over learned and stuff like that. So I will <laughs> I will change the script this time round. Uh, yeah, yeah. uh, I, I consider myself a certified hustler. If I'm looking to know who you are, are you Ugandan? If yes, what are the values that define you as Ugandan? <sighs> That's the easiest question I think to answer. I am a Tipilo Lao man from a rooted north yeah. in a place called Ogur, and where I will be laid to rest is in a village called Agweng. So if you go there and you just say Otoa Tony, they won't really know me because my father is also Otoa Tony. <laughs> you have to ask for Junior. And when you're asking, you have to ask with an accent. Yeah. Junior Tikwene. Yeah. Where is Junior? <laughs> and they will, they will identify me. But I am I'm typically Ugandan, yeah. only Ugandan, yeah. uh, from Lira. I uh, pride myself from being uh, from Lira. I, earlier on, I, I was joking and saying I'm the coolest lago yeah. south of Karuma. <laughs> when you cross Karuma, there are so many. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah. you're down in the south, south. after Karuma, oh, 
I think I, I'm number <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. Well, now that you know Tony Otoa is Ugandan, and of course, what are the values that define you as a Ugandan? Um, I think it's the love for country, uh, love for nation. You know, truth be told, the country is in a lot of, it's a crisis. Leadership crisis, economic crisis, social crisis. There's so many mismatching areas. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's home. You know, you cannot run and abandon your home because of the issues in your home. I think that then creates an opportunity for you to do something to change what's happening and what you see as a crisis. So in terms of what I see as a, a value, what I take out of that for me, I think is just the, the love for country, the, the need to serve country the best way I can. And I mean, I can't say I, I can change everything, but the little I can do to create a difference, I think is more meaningful. Wow. Yeah. Mr. Tony Otoa, growing up, what did you want to be in life? And uh, what was the journey like for Mr. Otoa? Yeah, you know, my father, my father is crazy. My father would call us and he would show me the compass. The idea was supposed to be a pilot. Yeah. You know, the planes <laughs> would fly over our house yeah. and uh, my father would be like, yeah, you're going to be a pilot. Yeah. But of course, as you grow, you realize that you have so many things that really define you. I was yeah. never a sportsman. So I enjoyed a lot of debate and, you know, indoor activities. And that is, I think, what really drove me into some of the things that I do up to today. Uh, public speaking, the love for debates and, 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 and really a lot of intellectual discourse and all this stuff. But besides that, I think it's also the fact that um, I won't lie. I didn't know what I wanted to be. It's a creative industry talk. My name is Eddie Okela. On this Tuesday morning or afternoon or night, depending on which part of the world you are watching from, I'd like to give a shout out to all the people in the US, in France, in Germany, and the guys in Australia. We have some people in Sweden who are very happily, uh, you know, following. And of course, Anton in Daula, all the way in the United States of America, up at this hour of the day, watching the show. Thank you very much. I'd like to reach out to my sister from another mother, Professor Penina Chayo from Washington University. Greetings to you from Kampala and welcome to the Creative Industry Talk. Lucille, welcome back to the program. And uh, Faisal, welcome back. Stella Tal in France, welcome back to the program. Lucille, I want to take you to my next question, which is what value does um, international cultural exchange and collaboration, you know, contribute to the artistic and creative industry? In the world let's start from there Ooh, what a huge question <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's complicated i think it depends on the artist i think like everyone needs maybe um different approaches so maybe for some artists it's really important for their creativity to meet people to understand better how culture works in the world i think for example the status of the artist is quite different in france and in uganda so i think this kind of collaboration for example residencies can really allow artists to understand better the different ways artists can do their profession. So, for example, we have some projects of residences between France and Uganda. Um, now it's a bit complicated with COVID, of course, because it's complicated to travel. But we organize some online residences. For example, we had a project uh, with uh, Villa Gilet, which is a cultural uh, place in France, near Lyon. And we organized um, a project with videos to our film um, people in the field of literature in Uganda. And I think, well, it's not very uh, a huge satisfaction, I say, because I really would prefer them to go to France to meet artists there and to understand better how literature works, let's say, in France. But still, I think it's interesting just to have connections between people. And uh, it allows, uh, apart from this better understanding of the situation and the status, I think it also um, allows maybe books or projects to have. Um, yeah, I think it's it's really important for this project to be spread, let's say, and uh, to allow these people to uh, enrich. Their, their work and uh, the way of uh, being artists. Okay. 
Lucille, the French people are very strong when it comes to promoting their culture. Mm. And <laughs> you, every country you go to, you make sure your culture is very strong. What is the motivation behind this? Why do you think it's important for your culture to be understood every country you go to? <laughs> I don't know, maybe just because people love wine and cheese, maybe just about <laughs> us. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, no, I think I think it's because it, it's a culture that people like. I think we have so many cliches attached to France, you know, like the Tour Eiffel and yes, the bread, the cheese, the wine. I think people know very well these symbols. So for them, it's really easy to just go to it and to understand, uh, you know, this culture because it's known everywhere. Um, for me, it's more that it's interesting to, yeah, once again, to meet people and to, I think you can't meet people properly if you don't know your own culture, you know. So, of course, I arrive with my cliches, with wine, cheese, bread, etc. Because this is the best way to know people um, and to share things. If you don't have these symbols, if you don't have these cliches, then it's a bit more complicated because you don't know how to connect with people. For example, in France, um, Uganda is not that well known for the moment. And then when you meet Ugandan people, then it's complicated to uh, connect with them because you don't know what to ask, you don't know where the country is situated. So I think it's important to understand your culture and to arrive to people with your own cliches to connect to them. Wow. Faizo and Stella Tal, your work is cut out. Uh, I, I, I probably want today after the show, I'm going to make sure uh, uh, wine and cheese and and, and bread and meat <laughs> malakwang and uh, ichok and uh, and mogo from the north i don't know what you're going to give but we're going to have to make sure these cultures interact Faisal, you've had my question to lucille what value does the international cultural exchange for example contribute to the artistic industry from where you sit you've had what lucille has said fantastic stuff going on there and now i think i understand why there is Alliance Francaise almost in every country that there is a French embassy or there is a French, you know, um, uh, international uh, office in because I, I like what you said is so that you can communicate with people but also learned that many people don't know much about Uganda in France and I think true because we're in the eastern part of the country and they were more into the yeah. western part of or the central part of Africa. Yes, Faisal, no, I, think, I think of course uh, many people know France, but some also many people don't know where it is. Yes, they know mm -hmm. the, the, the country. Uh, and for Uganda, also, I think we also have our staff. You yeah. know, certain things you need to know. Yes, like if you're from Uganda, you gossip, then you transfer <laughs> that culture, you know, take it away, yeah. share it with others. Um, I think it's a yeah, it's a challenge, but it all comes down to uh, you know, national branding. I think what, one of the biggest setbacks we've faced as Ugandans, and that's why many people know about us, is because of their main atrocities, you know, the civil war of Kony. I, I think Uganda made headlines during this uh, Kony war. There was, a, there was an organization that did this uh, video that was really trending, and uh, everywhere you went to, you know, in Washington, D.C., you, you found stickers of uh, Uganda and, and the Kony, you know, publishing it. Um, but I, I definitely it's important uh, and it's a strategy as we've been talking over, you know, in doing our episodes in the previous ones. Um, the challenge is that Uganda is not known culturally because we haven't managed to uh, define what can we export. We are very, uh, we have so many cultures, we have so many uh, cultural uh, tribes and uh, languages. And I think it has been difficult, like for France, everyone speaks French. It might be a different tone or a different accent, but they all speak French. They understand each other. Isn't that right? Yeah. yeah. So it is easy for you know someone to represent. It doesn't matter where, whether you're coming from the north of France or the south of France or the east or the west. You're all going to be speaking French and exporting it. Here, it's difficult. Eddie, when you try to speak your Uganda, I, I close my hey, eyes on. and I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, what is he saying? So it's difficult for you. What are you going to take out yes. there? If you if you if you're given an opportunity to go to France, what language are you going to speak? I'll take a Le Blanc. Uh, I see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 also this uh, this uh, this issue that we are facing that we haven't we don't have a unifying language, 
even though Luganda is most spoken, uh, but it's not, a, it's not accepted as a national language, so we cannot export that. We don't have a, a unifying culture that you know we eat cheese or we eat marakwang or we, you know we all have different foods so everyone will take whatever and it's confusing depending on who you mean so that's where i think we are and i think would, what would have really helped us to kind of brand ourselves would have been maybe a focus on the creative productions creative content that would have defined uganda as you can see uh, we made two or one film or two films like last king of scotland it put Uganda there, you know, as a country. Of course, it was also still about Amin, but it was a very good film that was received. And many people now knew about Uganda from that angle. And then The Queen of Katwe was also a good production. So if we can think around, if we can't afford to have a unifying cultural attire or uh, language, but we can think about other things like music, theater, dance, uh, etc. Okay, Stella Tal in Paris, uh, have you exported the uh, Malakwang and the Bo to France? Because uh, Lucille needs to return to France to visit the family and eat Malakwang in France, then we will know that cheese and Malakwang and, uh, you know, and uh, all our ways of dressing are now known in France. But uh, that aside, Stella, what value do you think this, uh, you know, international exchanges and collaborations create? and contribute to the artistic industry and to the creative industry, uh, you know, from across the spectrum? Um, I think, you know, being a creative, all people ex uh, express their feelings and their desires through what they do. And if I'm painting, if I'm a Ugandan, normally all my paintings are going to be inspired by uh, maybe the Ugandan culture, if I'm singing contemporary music, it's going to be like all my music is inspired by what I see in my country. I want to represent certain groups of people, different cultures. And um, if I may be like a drama, I'm going to use the local instruments. But then there is more to that. If you go to international like festivals, really the language is uh, one of the big keys to cultural exchanges. But then as a creative, me, I believe you don't need to know the language to be in a certain country. You can go as you are with your content, with your creativity. You're going to go and perform on stage in your language and people are going to appreciate. It's just the technique you put in what you're doing that makes you unique. And then people would like to know, how are you doing it? If you're playing the dungu, how are you playing it? In Europe, they have uh, guitars, but then we have the local guitars. And then the sound that comes out of it it helps you like connect your culture not connect like promote what you have in uganda through the instruments to the rest of the world you don't need to know the language to play an instrument you don't need to know the language to put your art piece on the wall but people who come to see the artwork artwork speaks for itself you look at the artwork and you tell the story yourself you find a story that you find in that painting normally painters artists don't tell stories behind their painting it's upon the viewer so there are many things we can do much as Pfizer was talking about yes in Uganda it's unfortunate that we don't have a unified like language or outfit or food but then there are so many other ways we can use to promote our culture like in these countries unfortunately even with food we have matok in uk but here we don't have anything ugandan like lucy you said it's a very small community and there is no nothing that unites us actually i may spend like even like two months without meeting a ugandan on the street because we don't have that culture of uniting we don't have that culture Let's maybe sit once a month and share our food invite the French people, cook for them our local food, and so they can appreciate. Before someone leaves France to come to like Uganda, I would love to teach them a few words, maybe like um, in English, in Uganda, cook for them, food, show them what we have before they get plain. But then unfortunately, they just read on the internet and the rest is a surprise when they land in Entebbe. Lucille, do you want to add something? Thank you, Stella. Do you want to add something on what Stella just said? 
Yes, I understand totally that it may be complicated when you live abroad uh, to feel like the, the gathering of your community. Um, but I think there are many ways to connect your own culture. I think there are many ways to uh, unify the culture, I think. And so, for example, for me, I live in Uganda and I've, I've been living here for seven months. And actually, I see many connections between the people. I think it's really a warm country. So indeed, uh, not all the countries speak Uganda, but still, I think there are many more ways to connect to people than just the language. Because, for example, in France, uh, indeed, we speak French, but we are trying now to uh, make a revival of the local languages. And it's complicated because we lose that <laughs> way more time before. Yeah. So I think it's a long work to uh, make people speak the language, uh, in, you know, like uh, again. Yeah. And you have this chance in Uganda to speak many languages. I think it's really a, like you're really rich, rich of your cultures. Because not so many people we, um, throughout the world speak so many languages, have so many cultures within, like it's a, a small country, you know. So you have this chance and I think you have to keep it. Wow. Well, I mean, you've heard from uh, Lucille Faiso, and uh, I think that um, the world describes Uganda as one of the most culturally diverse country in the world. We speak over 54 different dialects. Imagine if the creative people here just come together and creatively package this to sell to the world. We could easily go to France and, and help the, the French people to <laughs> learn from us, as Lucille has said, we are trying to come like this. <laughs> But uh, we need to take advantage of this, and I want to hear your thoughts right there. You've heard from Lucille and from uh, Faiso and from Stella Tal. We're going to take another coffee break to allow you to grab a cup of coffee so that you can enjoy the creative industry talk from either the comfort of your office or from working, uh, you know, your 42 days lockdown at home as it is out of Kampala to the rest of the world. From whichever part, please have a cup of coffee. The Creative Industry Talk will be returning in just a moment. And we will have two more questions to discuss before we call it off. So stay right there. We'll be right back after the break. Edio Killer, Lucille Fontaine, uh, Faisal Chiwewa, and Stella Tal in Paris. It is a creative industry talk. My name is Edio Okela and welcome to the program. In the studio is Lucille Fontaine who is the cultural attaché and of course the in charge of education, languages and the focal point for you to do exchange at the Embassy of France in Kampala. <laughs> right? And of course Faiso Chiwewa is the founder and uh, artistic director of Bayimba Cultural Foundation is uh, the focal point for programming artists that goes 
to the cultural exchanges that uh, Lucille is re responsible at the <laughs> French Embassy. Stella Tal in France is already exported there as a cultural exchange for Uganda, <laughs> representing Uganda in Paris. Stella, welcome back to the program. And Faisal, welcome back to the program. Lucille, welcome back to the program. I want to dive to you, Lucille, straight away. What are some of the initiatives by the French government to enhance cultural exchange between Uganda and France? And what is their impact and how can creatives in Uganda be part of it? Mm, well, so we can count with uh, partners. That's the first thing. I think it's really important to have like many stakeholders to help you, you know, because here it's a small embassy. So we have to get uh, contacts to help us with that. So uh, we have Campus France, uh, Stola talked about it. It's the French operator in charge of the studies in France. They are located within Macerere and within the Alliance Française. And my colleague, Mercy, uh, she's in charge of, uh, of that, receiving people, uh, giving them advice about their studies, um, helping them to find uh, scholarships uh, to help them to go and study in France. Um, and then we have the French Institute, which is located in Paris and uh, throughout the world. And they send us a uh, call for projects, call for application. Um, they, they help us with the uh, foundings. And so thanks to that, we can uh, help the artists in Uganda to receive funds and to build projects to go to France. And then uh, we have um, other projects that are financed by the French government and the French Ministry uh, of Foreign Affairs. So for example, we have this new project, which is called the FSP. And the purpose of this project is to, uh, is to help the partners in the country um, to receive funds and to build innovative projects to try new things. Because I think the purpose is more to try new things that, than helping for long time partners, you know. Um, our ambassador says uh, usually that we don't want to fish for people, we want them, uh, you, you know, we want to fish with them and to help them to get food, you know. That's the point. So I think like with the cultural project, uh, the purpose is to work with people and to try to work with them, not for them. Uh, for the cultural field and so as I said we work with the National Theatre, the National Museum, Alliance Française, Nige Nige and the, the Ministry of Gender and uh, thanks to this project we want to understand better how the cultural ecosystem works in Uganda um, and to uh, yeah to work better together that's the point I mean we want to work together okay so if I'm an individual Lucille uh, before I go to Pfizer if I'm an individual called uh, Edio Kila and the Lango cultural activities. How do I work with the French Embassy? So there are many initiatives actually. For example, Alliance Française, they have an open mic session, they have platforms every month where they receive the new um, Ugandan creation. So on the pages, on the social network, you can find all the call for applications. And it's the same with the French Embassy. We, uh, we have our website, we have uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter when we spread a call for applications and projects. So there, all the people who are artists and have some project can find all the information about what we do. And uh, yeah, we can meet us, uh, I mean, not now because of the curfew, <laughs> because of uh, yeah, yeah. The, it's the end of the event for June and July, but yeah. soon I guess we will be able to meet uh, at the ambassador's residence in all the places, uh, the cultural places in Kampala. Okay. Faisal, you've heard what uh, Lucilla just said. And on that question of um, what are some of the initiatives, she has highlighted a number of them. I've asked her about the impact. Um, Lucilla, you haven't yet touched the impact, but I will dive to Faisal and then we'll come back to mm. you and Stella. Yes, Faisal. Baimba, are you taking advantage of this? Have you taken advantage of this? And uh, what impact has it been to you? Um, impact. Uh, of course, we've, uh, we've worked with the French uh, yeah. for a long time, since 2008. Uh, as I said earlier, not only, not only with the embassy, but also directly with artists from France. Uh, we've worked with a, a video, some of the greatest you know, artists from Paris, from Marseille, uh, We've been partnering with um, uh, Baba Med in Marseille, it's a market like Doa Doa. Uh, we've been uh, trying to do something with Midem as well for East Africa. 
Um, but also, we've worked with the uh, um, uh, Institut Francais. Uh, actually, they have been supporting Doa Doa for, I think, four years in the past. So we used to receive funding from IF uh, to support our regional, which was actually the first time because uh, IF has been very much French, Francophonie dominated or focused. Uh, so they were always supporting projects in, in West Africa till I met with my friend Valérie. And I told her, why, what, what about in the Anglophone Africa? So we were the first organization to receive um, money from IF uh, in that perspective. So we've really had uh, great collaborations. We've mm -hmm. had, um, and there are also so many possibilities. I think some of our artists in Uganda have benefited from the RF Awards. Uh, Maurice Kiria toured uh, 36 countries when he won his RF. Uh, Joel Sebunyo has recorded an album uh, supported by the French government. Uh, Sandra Subi's new album, uh, Kadugala, was uh, in collaboration with the French Alliance and recorded in Paris. And she's still now on tour. I think uh, Catherine Nakawesa, she's doing a dance collaboration uh, uh, film uh, for the, I don't know which collaboration, but it's also based in uh, Paris. I think there's another program which is like RFI for contemporary dances. So, there are so many opportunities for uh, Ugandans and that have benefited from the French. I think some of them are not known. One, one of the reasons is because we don't understand the language. Most of it is presented in, uh, in French. So, and we, when something is French, so people don't really pay attention to it, except those who are part of the, 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 the network uh, at Orleans. So that's where many people don't get to know about it. But also, uh, because of the language uh, barrier, um, France has also not been putting so much emphasis on the Anglophone uh, creative uh, projects, uh, like it is in West Africa. Uh, there has been a lot of development, um, you know, most of the, actually, I really think the entire cultural sector in West Africa is run by France. Uh, most of the the biggest concert halls, the uh, Alliance uh, Institute Francais, uh, the festivals are organized by IF, and you know, so it's really, really there has been a huge emphasis. And even when it comes to film, and it was also another uh, another challenge that went to uh, that got caught into the um, the SCP culture when we realized that actually uh, countries like uh, you know Senegal or Mali are receiving more money to do film than anywhere else in East Africa, or in the Anglophone Africa. So, but now that, that has changed, they have diversified that now. You can now, every region has its own budget, which is really good. Uh, so the opportunities have been there, we've explored it. And we've also been recently working with the Afri Creative, which is an AFD funded project. Uh, I think it was the first time for them to invest in creative industries, because it's not really their area. They, they focus on big projects. So they have been really trying to explore how they can also support the creative arts and it's a, an ongoing program. So yeah, the opportunities have been there and I'm very happy that uh, uh, they have been open for our industry to use, to explore and uh, benefit from them. Yeah. Well, thank you very much Faisal. Stella Tal in Paris, uh, the, the, the fashion exported out of Uganda, creativity from Uganda. What has been the impact of these collaborations uh, to you and how can Ugandan creatives continue to be part of it as Lucilla said, if you we can pick a leaf from you. Stella? Hmm. Actually, I teach um, art and I teach fashion, but then Africa inspired. And I don't have like age group. I teach from the children of six years up to the university level. It depends on the project you, you, you present and then they say, okay, we want you to do this in this school. And it depends on the community, actually. Because for the young ones, I work with the mayors. Those are like uh, municipals, mayors. I work with the mayors because they want programs, international programs for the children, for the young children, to grow up learning about different cultures, cultures that are different from their own. And then for the big children in the high schools, there, that's when I do real fashion and art. And the aim of this is to introduce the African system into their education system, to share the experience I have with them and then also to learn with them. Because for me, when I learn with, from them, it helps me when I get back home, I can transfer that knowledge to the young generation 
to the designers who are not able to make it to Paris. And we've had um, some successful like collaborations, like I told you before, where we bring in students from France to Uganda and then Uganda to France. It's not been so easy like for me to do that because first of all, these children you work with, they're not adults. Some of them have just got like 18. And for you to bring children from France to Uganda, they must be above 18. If they are not, then even if they're above 18, because of the security reasons, I cannot stand as me and say I'm going to take a group of people. Even the French embassy, much as they are part of it, if there is no like a communication between the two countries, even the French people have to work with the Ugandan government, the Ugandan embassy, to know that we are bringing your children to France, we are bringing these children to Uganda. But then it's been a one-sided effort, I may say, that the French embassy end up doing everything. And sometimes it's not really easy. Like if you get individuals who want to come to France and they have to apply through the embassy to get the visas, even if they already have the opportunities here, still the embassy is going to ask for recommendation someone to recommend them who knows them or like a minister of culture which we don't have in uganda then they have to look for a person like faizo faizo is going to be in lunkulu and there is no other person who can second them so it's a big challenge that uh, we have so many creatives and there are so many opportunities like lucio said like faizo said but then for faizo's group of uh, artists these look for the opportunities themselves and they are already known they look for the connections so they wouldn't need all this information or recommendation but then for the unknown ones who are the majority we still lack this and i don't know what we are going to do about it because we are missing out on many many opportunities thank you very much stella and for that i am uh, happy that uh, lucille you are in the studio today and uh, we hope that we will have you back here mm -hmm. to answer some of the tough questions that are going to come. I want to open up the line briefly before we go into our last part of the show. And uh, we want to read a comment coming from uh, one. Kassirie Adam Kad says, as an upcoming talent manager, I learned a lot from this show. Thank you, guys. I think that's the comment. Thank you very much. I think today most people are learning from you. And I have another person here says, Edio Killer, I'm watching the show all the way uh, from Sweden. I'm a Ugandan creative based in Sweden. Yes, I think the French people do quite a lot. Uh, we don't quite reciprocate in the same measure as they give to us. I wish we could take the advantage and do the same. I've had the story about Uganda not being able to, uh, you know, be more prominent in France, like France is in most of the African countries, because the African countries don't take advantage of the opportunity available for them uh interesting and then this one says uh, to me say jackson Connolly says whoa i like the show thanks guys well i guess these are young creatives uh, who are <laughs> landing onto the show uh Kassiria adam has said that um from my observation i think our problem is uh, solidarity we have failed to come together and work on things that unifies us as uh, and focused more on what divide us we don't come together we just need willingness to do that then the rest will be history just like the french decided to do even the africans need to do the same well thank you very much kasiria adam these are young creatives on the show i want to pause straight to another message that has come from um from uh, the u.s it says edio killer my name is moses based in uh, the uk I love the show. The creative industry talk is very good for us. I wish we could have more of this and take advantage of this going forward. And uh, thank you very much. I see so many messages coming. I won't read all of them because of the time, but we will be able to respond. Faisal, the, in fact, let me start with uh, you this time around. What strategies uh, can the government of Uganda <laughs> develop to market its rich cultural heritage? as a tool for international collaboration as you've had already from 
uh, Lucy, that they are and they are doing, and she's going to respond from that context. Yes. No, I mean, um, I, as I, I always tell you, um, I'm not. I'm not here. I don't. I mean, I don't really like to talk for government. Yes. And I don't want to play this kind of game of like, oh, government should do this, government should do that. I think we are part of the government, yeah. uh, even though we are not. We don't hold positions of uh, leadership, but we are the government, and we have to first ask ourselves, what are we doing to take Uganda where it's supposed to go? Yeah. And I think if we start from there as a people we will definitely go there as Adam was saying. Um, for me, before I start asking what the government has done for me, I have to first do my part and I am doing my part. And the way I'm doing my part is to see that I have a vision and which vision that I try to share with everyone else to see that we can see ourselves fitting into this vision. And then from that, as, 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 as individuals, we can start having our own contribution to the bigger vision. We might not have the bigger vision as a country that government needs to lead us and uh, you know when we talk about theories of change where does the, the creative industry government want the creative industries to go we don't have that overall vision from government but we are making already contributions and i think where the french are they started somewhere and i don't think now the the policies that they work with are just new they have been embedded into their culture. They are, they are normal to them. Go out there, you have to eat cheese, you have to drink wine, you have to speak French. It's not even told. They don't tell you that. But we are still here talking about what can I do as a Ugandan when I go out? What can I take? What I, so we are still asking ourselves questions. So we still have a long way to go. But whereas that way is being paved, we have to make our own contributions. And then we can start looking at, I think when the government sees that there are more Ugandans who are really focused on doing things for the sake of doing them, they will start realizing that they can also add their contribution to it so that it's much more stronger and bigger. Okay. Faisal, on that note, what are the opportunities and threats that you see? Opportunities are many. I mean, it starts with, the, with life, of course. Uh, I'm, more, I'm more is looking at how do we uh, keep people safe, you know, making sure that they are healthy. Education is important when it comes to uh, the creative development of, uh, of our people, uh, starting with young people. One of the biggest challenge or threat I see that we are losing a generation of creatives because we don't have a, 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 a developmental structure that can bring them to be more thoughtful and, uh, and, and, and insightful and creative because we don't teach them to become uh, thinkers uh, at the beginning and even when they grow you know when you look at the vocational schools when you look at the uh, the creative hubs when you look at the uh, you know incubators they are all disconnected there is no pattern there is no strategy there is no structure so we need to rethink and that's what I have always thought that we need to first actually we should have used this COVID period as a you know as an advantage to first pause everything and rethink our our way of working. How do we want things to work? Not only for the creatives, but also other in the other industries. So, if we could see that uh, the opportunities we have, we are culturally diverse, rich. We have a, a generation of young people who can do much more, and we have a room to restart from scratch, which is possible because we've not gone anywhere. You know, we can start from scratch and see what others have done. How can we adapt? What are the context analysis that we can put into that and see where do we need our people to go? But it comes with a, a lot more than just individuals. It comes with a huge contribution from the political uh, wing. It comes with a huge contribution from the finances and looking at people as people because there is no reason of making things, uh, trying. You, you can't think for a country when you can't see people. And I think the gap here is most of the people in leadership don't see people. They see themselves, they don't see others. And I think if we can start looking at ourselves, other people, all together, and then we will start worrying and considering and concerned about others so that we can grow all together. Wow, Pfizer, you said that uh, we, if we could pause in the lockdown, well, we have 42 days, we just need <laughs> two days of it. So maybe this is a good point. Uh, Stella Tal, you have heard what Pfizer said on that question, and I would want to come back to Lucille on that point. Stella, what strategies can government of Uganda, your very own government, our very own government, should take to develop, uh, you know, to market the richest culture we have on planet Earth?
as the world says, and our heritage as a tool of international collaboration. What should we do? How should we go about the fact that you're based in France, the fact that you interact with many of these people, not just from the French territories, but also from our own government in our own foreign offices all across the world. What advantage do we have? And of course, I want you to close it there with what are the opportunities and threats that we have. Stella, over to you. Um, I think, like uh, Faisal said, the opportunities we have that we, there is a lot that we can export. There is a lot that we can take to the world. But then back to my country, uh, still, we, if we don't appreciate who we are, and don't appreciate what we have, then there is nothing we're going to export. Because uh, Faisal just said, everything is dying home. The way children are being taught, the vocational centers where they're teaching, there is nothing connected to, okay, there is a, a point where okay, culture is integrated, but then we've lost a lot from the years. And I think before we look at the government to help us, let us gather ourselves. Let us take a break, like Faisal said. Rethink of what we can do. Because there is information. Okay, during COVID, you may not have to travel. You may not be able to travel. Go on the internet, go to YouTube, see what other people are doing. If you're interested in music, don't wait until you're going to get an opportunity to come to Paris and do maybe a collab or a recording. First look and see what you can do to improve what you're doing back home and then see how your creativity, how your talent can benefit, change other people's lives in the community. You don't need to be a teacher. You don't need to be a graduate to go and teach. You can teach what you know and it's a talent. So a talent, when you go to school with a talent, you get the knowledge, but then talent is inborn and it's something you can pass on to the generations and generations and when you look at all the old people who are who used to tell us stories the history about the countries these people didn't go to school but then they've been there when everything is happening and they had the interest so they tell a story like you would learn in school so let's embrace who we are what we have and then when the government will see that here yes, stella is doing this Bimba is doing this ed is doing this then they see like okay lucille has come into the country and is working with this people what is so special about the people lucille is working with how can we help out that is the only way we are going to pull the government to come and be part of us we want to ask you from the point of a person already doing it six months you said seven months in kampala uh what has been your journey since you arrived in Kampala? What have you seen? What opportunities have you seen for us? What are our threats? And how can you, where you sit, advise your colleagues in our government on how we can market and take the opportunity to also do the same thing in France, given the fact that it says a little is known about Uganda in France and our culture. And yet, when you come out here, you find a very huge opportunity, you know, walking with their heads and legs and hands in the streets of Kampala and you said I love this yet it's not as diverse as what you have in France what lessons can we pick from there what how would you advise the government of Uganda from a diplomatic point of view as an attaché in our you know French embassy in Kampala I mean there are so many people so many creative people they do so much with uh, not so many uh, not so much money, um, not so much training, not so much time because most of the young people I've seen have like three works and I'm really impressed about that, like how many people have such a good will and uh, yeah, so much motivation, uh, so many ideas about what they want to do. So for me it has been really um, impressive and inspiring to see uh, those, those young people doing uh, so, so, good, so much good work. Um, yes, that's the first thing. Impression uh, is really uh, good and uh, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, really so impressed. So, so I need to clap for Uganda on this one, Faisal. <laughs> okay, <laughs> continue. <laughs> um, I would say that apart from uh, this um, admiration, I would say, 
I think that many people um, have, uh, yes, I, I don't know how they do that. I mean, I think they really connect between uh, the cultural inspiration and then the digital tools, for example. Like you can see, there is no, not that many uh, um, tools, digital tools here, but still, there are so many like applications, you know, even like Zoom, yeah, it's like, it's impressive to, to see how people manage to uh, find new tools uh, that we don't have in France, actually, to uh, find new ways of living. So this is really something interesting. That's clap number four, guys. <laughs> I, I need to clap for this Faiso, yeah? Yeah, you should. <laughs> you should be proud. Yes, yes, yeah, you yes. should be proud of being that here. Particularly, done. we don't have this tool in France and it is here. That's no, a huge yes. Yeah, that's what I always say that, uh, you know, Uganda, if someone is serious, it's we are more like a laboratory. Yeah. You know, mm. we are testing things and some things work, some things are no, don't work. Of course, some things take time. But we have an opportunity to invent, to uh, uh, innovate, to you know, to come up with really, really serious products that could be, you know, competitive uh, with the rest of the world. And I think that level of uh, you know, leveling with the rest of the uh, of the world to see that w even if we we don't have much, we as Rasil says, we don't have much. But what can we do? What are the small things that we can, you know, champion and and leverage and and take it and share them with the rest of the world? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Lucille, please uh -huh. continue. We are yeah. on point number two. Yes, yeah. because I think that the main point is to understand that it's not about having less or more than other countries, which are supposed to be uh, to have more success. Success, you know. The point is to know who you are, what you have, and then what you can do with what you have. This is why I was talking about uh, the knowledge you have about your own culture and your own possibilities. I think the opportunities are everywhere. You just have to find a good way to uh, take them and to do your own stuff with that. Okay. What are some of the threats that you have seen so far with us? Um, maybe it's about uh, homogeneity because like, there are so many young people and you know when you're young, you want to do uh, as the other ones, right? You want to be like in the mainstream culture because it looks so good. So maybe it could be a threat, uh, not finding your own way of being yourself, but rather try to do like the other do. I think that's the problem, maybe the threat. So I think I would say that young people have to find their own way of being uh, themselves, their own way of leaving the culture, um, finding their identity, and then finding their own, their own models, you know? It's not just about being American, eating burgers, <laughs> you know, having the same, yeah. I mean, fashion here, yeah. you know, so that I can talk about that is yeah. so interesting. Music is really diverse. The, I mean, everything is really interesting. Like even the country, the, um, the landscape type is so different. Yeah. So we have to find our own ways of uh, being uh, ourselves, of being different. And that's uh, the, the, be the best opportunity we can find as an individual, I think. Okay. Um, uh, Lucille, I just want to ask you this last question as we wind up. From a, a diplomatic point of view, you've talked about from as the creative, the one inchy, what we call the local people here, the, the people who don't make. But you sit where certain decisions are made at certain level politically. And what would be your best advice to your colleagues from uh, you know the government side of things what opportunity do you see for them and what threats do you see for them and if you're to advise them right now as an attache culturally touched attached to the french embassy in kampala you know coordinating educations and language and uh, you know making opportunities happen for people all across particularly in uganda to france and bring france to uganda what would be your best advice or you know small token of appreciation or words or advice or threats you see to the government of uganda from the diplomatic point of view mm -hmm. i would say um, my, my best advice would be to to work with us and really like to consider that it's not just about receiving things but rather to um, start to work together and to uh, have this collaboration i was talking about before so I think we have to think beyond the function of the people. So it's not about being a diplomat or being an artist or to think about this uh, function, you know, because the, the thing is more to think about what you, you want to do and not who you want to be, you know, like be, saying I want to be an artist. This is not the clue of uh, a good work, I think. The clue is more about what you want to do 
and uh, how you want to work with people, how you want to uh, help your country to become a better country, or how you can help your family to become more unified, these kind of things. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think what we have to do also as an embassy is uh, to look for people who can be hidden because there are so many people in Kampala, for example, sometimes it's complicated to uh, find the new talents. So thanks to your show, for example, <laughs> and uh, thanks to uh, these initiatives, I think we have, the, we have better clues to find people. And uh, we have to understand better the local context. We have to uh, look for things that are not obvious. Because sometimes, you know, you just uh, uh, go on TV, or you look for new talents, but actually they are not new. It's quite uh, easy to, uh, to see them. And I think it's really interesting to find new ways of finding new cultures that can be hidden and not that much valorized, uh, valued in, in Uganda. Wow. And as your last word, uh, if you are to go back and advise the Ugandan embassy in France, what would you say to them? <laughs> Having learned from here, what would you say to them? I think I would say the same, actually, because I think collaboration is also reciprocal, you know? So I would say, don't look for wine, look for all kinds <laughs> of beverages, <laughs> and it's the same, like, don't uh, try to find like local stuff, you know, like even in France, actually, it's not just about like this unified culture. Of course, we have just one language, main language, but there are many ways of being French. And yeah. this is the same in France. There are many different people, many different individualities. So we always have to find the hidden things um, apart from the mainstream culture. Uh, my last word would be to all the creatives that uh, don't feel shy about what you're doing because maybe because of the language or because you're not educated what you do if you're good at what you're doing you can take it on the global market and you'll be appreciated no matter the other conditions so be proud of who you are do your things right and try to do to engage more into exchange cultural exchanges and that is going to help you open your mind to the world and understand that what I'm doing, I can take it to America and they like it in Uganda, in Luo, I can take it to France and they like it. And that is going to make you confident because you're going to know about other cultures, how people are confident about their cultures and it will help you grow. No, I think uh, international collaboration and exchange has always been one of the ways that cultures and, uh, you know, people are going to get exposed to new things. It's not only about the creatives, but also in politics, uh, in uh, security, military uh, exchanges. Uh, so, so many things have been really, uh, you know, championed and enhanced because of these uh, interactions around the world. So for us in the arts, we are very grateful that we've happened to experience this and i'm always looking forward to collaborations and i'm looking forward for more bigger collaborations to come in the future so i'm excited and i'm really uh, convinced that uh, we will get there one day uh, hopefully maybe before we, <laughs> we die <laughs> but it's good and uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to the new things that are coming up well, thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, thank you very much, Lucille, for coming. Yeah, this is how we do it, so we need to teach you how we do this thing. So you do this and you spread the love. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, and you spread the love. And to Faizo, thank you very much. To Stella Tal, thank you very much for coming to the program today. We hope that we'll be able to have you back on the show uh, next week to discuss a little bit more how we can continue with this collaboration going forward. We want to delve deep into this and see how best we can uh, maximize on the opportunities we have in these uh, 42 days of lockdown before it becomes uh, 80 days of lockdown <laughs> so that it becomes oh, yeah. much uh, you know better mm -hmm. and to all of you guys thank you very much for being a part of the show and of course for being a part of the creativity stop growing bigger and better every big thing in the world started from a small pond somewhere in the backyard of an individual digging the hole or 